Hey y'all, thanks for tuning in. In this video, I'm going to be showing y'all how to take this stuff and make all this stuff. Stick around. So y'all that don't already recognize this plant, this is a yucca plant. And I know there's several different species of them. This is a non-native species. We don't have any native yuccas here in Kentucky. I know they have a lot out west and like down maybe South Carolina. I know they have them in Georgia and Florida. But these are some I planted maybe 10 years ago or something. And you can see, compared to the ones in the shade of the big maple tree here, that they really prefer open sun. So anybody thinking about cultivating some of these to try to get cordage off of in the future, I would really recommend putting them in full sun. But it makes really good stuff, really easy to work with. And older people in this part of the country used to actually call these a needle and thread. And right there you can see why they would use the point of the plant as their needle and kind of kind of trim the sides down a little bit and almost make like a thread and just sew with that point right there. And a lot of old folks around here called this a needle and thread plant. They didn't call it a yucca. They call it a yucca and they wouldn't know what the hell that was back then. But I'm going to show y'all how easy it is to harvest this stuff. And I'm just going to use a little stone tool that I've chipped out and just show you how easy it is to do so you can do it even if you don't have a steel blade. So this is what I'm going to be using. It's just a little piece of Keo cook jerk that I've sharpened down into a little tool and been using on little odd projects and stuff. Show y'all how quick and easy it is to harvest yucca with a stone tool. Already we've got that much, that many blades to work with. Nothing to it. So first thing we want to do in this process before we get it to our little fiber stage here is we gotta scrape it. And you can see the difference in this stuff back here. This is some that's just been cut a couple days ago. It's still really green and you got a lot of moisture in it because it's not dried out. This is some that's been cut and been drying for a few days. Here's a piece that's actually about dry. But I'm going to be using this stuff just because I like it better because it there's less moisture in it and it just makes better tighter cordage, a better finished product, I think. But everybody's different. But today, I'm going to be using the, say, 50% dry stuff. And all I'm going to be using, again, just this little stone tool I've chipped out. I'm going to use it through the whole process start to finish just to show how easy this is. So first off, a decent looking blade of this stuff. And I'm going to lay it. It's best to lay it on something like, like I have here because what will happen if you put it say on something flat like this tabletop or this cutting board you're going to be scraping it and your fingers is right down here on the same plane you're trying to get to. So if you just put it on something like this, kind of raise it up a little bit and you can work around it too. But it just makes it easier. This piece of wood is actually the baton I use for flint mapping for indirect percussion leaks. As you can see there, all that coming off, that's stuff that we don't want. That's just chlorophyll and starch and has no tensile strength. It's just trash. So you want to get rid of that stuff. And whenever I first started fooling with this, making cordage out of it and different stuff, I really didn't see the value of taking all this stuff off. I would be doing this and I'd think to myself, well, I'm just mauling this to death. I'm just tearing it all to pieces. What value is it after I've mauled it like that? Well, I'll show you here in just a second. You can see we've only done one side now, but you can see all this is coming off. So that's bad stuff. That's not going to tie anything together. 
and all this is left behind all these little individual fibers so we're going to do the same thing to the other side now scrape it all the same direction because I feel like if you go back and forth you're a lot more likely to be to be tearing your fibers and just ripping them up instead of actually scraping all the chlorophyll all the green stuff off and you ain't really got to get all of it it ain't an exact science just get most of it off you know your way so then once you get that this is kind of what you're left with. And you can just see all the fibers in that. And that's why this plant, this yucca plant, has such a value for cordage, rope, string, whatever you want to call it. And what you want to do next, I start about halfway, about center, and just start tearing it out. I done got me a pile started over here. And I kind of try to, to alternate back and forth and not not lay all the ends one way just i feel like it mixes it up and makes a better cord that way and they ain't got to all be the same size i'll rip out like little single fibers like this and throw it in there and next one you know maybe rip a, a wider one like that because i think it helps too to have all different sizes and they ain't got to be the same length either and here in a moment, once we start making the actual cord, I'll show y'all why. But I mean, in nature, the materials you're using ain't going to be a constant anyway. They're not always going to be the same. They're not always going to be the same length, the same thickness. So you're kind of just working on the fly with what you got. about shredded this one up. Got fingernails in there on it. You see it done started, got a little pile going here. So the next thing is to get our loop started. And we're gonna try and make a piece like this right here. I started on this last night, but the first thing you see we have to do is start this loop here. That's the first step nothing to it this is this is easy it's simple anybody can do this okay so what i've got behind the camera here just to give y'all a first person view of how to start this so you just grab a grab a section go down about halfway kind of make a u-shape and all you want to do is start it one time bring Bring the bottom one towards you. And after you do that one time, twist the top one away. Bring the bottom one towards you. I just want to repeat that. Top one twists away. Hold tension with your other hand. Grab it. Twist it away. And see, now we're creating a twist. Same thing. Top one twist away, grab the bottom one, twist it to you. Just over and over. That's all we're going to be doing. I'm going to sit back down here and get a little more comfortable and show y'all some more of this. Well, hopefully y'all can see that all right. So we got started there. I'm going to keep my finger in that loop for now. Top string twist away, grab it, bring it to you. And just repeating the same pattern. And if you start feeling it get a little thin, that's going to be the next step in this. So right now I can kind of feel it getting thin, so I'm going to kind of hold it a little like that so the twist don't come out. I'll hold it here. Reach back in the pile. Get a little more out. And the way I do this, I go about halfway with my new bundle. Line it up with the top, the bottom one, kind of wrap it a half turn. The top one we're going to be twisting anyways. We just do, keep doing what we've been doing. Twist the top away, bottom comes to you. Top away, bottom comes to you. Now we're back on track and we've tied in our next section. 
even though that looks rough, it's still going to work. And stuff like this, you're not going for something that's going to be shown in a display case or something. You're going for something that's utilitarian and useful like this. And that's really all there is to it. But as you go along, you kind of got to watch because you can see there, you know, I've kind of got it started now, but if you don't watch, this twist will back off. So while you're getting started, you kind of want to hold it in place. Like about right there, that looks pretty good to me. But that's, again, that's all you're doing. You're just repeating that one little pattern. Twist it away. Come back to you. And if you're like me and you got a little bit of mild dyslexia, sometimes it's harder than it appears. So I'm going to tie out another piece here and show you all. Line this one up. Drop this over about a half turn. Twist away. Turn it. Twist away. Turn it. Back on track. And see that quick is made, you know, pretty much a simple primitive rope. And man, that's strong. Really strong. If you think it's just for looks, you can give us a try and test it. I'm telling you, man, they make bow strings and just everything in the world out of this stuff. It is really, really tough. Well, you can imagine, you know, like in the movie Apocalypto, they was tying up their prisoners with this stuff. So you talk about real world applications, something that can tie up a human being or say they use this to set a leg snare for a deer or a small pig or something like that. And I mean, ain't much nothing going to get away from it unless you can cut it or chew your way out. So like I was saying about real world applications for stuff like this, a lot of y'all probably watch this and thinking, yeah, Josh, that's cool. You took a weed and made a rope. What are you going to do with it? Well, really, there's a whole lot you can do with it. And I just want to show y'all some examples of stuff that I've been working on here. This is a cool one. This is different. This is a piece that I braided. I didn't use the twist like I showed y'all just now. This is a braid that I've done. And you can see how small it is. And the reason it's so small was because I intended for this to be a fishing line. And it's like seven foot long until I got to tinkering around and broke it after I done had it made. But anyways, I wanted it light for a fish line and kind of supple. And my plan for this is to nap me out a flint fish hook and tie it rascal on there and cut me a river cane rod with a primitive knife I'm gonna build and take it over to the pond and try to catch some fish. I think it'd be a lot of fun, make a cool episode, so future plans. But anyway, there you go, where's your fishing line? I mean, if you was out and had to build a shelter, just cordage to tie your shelter together with, like the rope we were working on. Um, Here's something I used and I didn't even strip it down like this. I didn't even turn it to fiber first. I just used, just used the natural blade and just put a, put a three piece braid in it real quick. And uh, just something, just so I want to see how quick I could put one together and that took just no time. That was three, three blades that took all of a minute or two. And then, you know, I could have continued it just as long as I would have needed a rope in a hurry. But if you needed something fast, there you go. That's about as fast as you can make cordage in the natural world. And uh, it's just so easy to do. Here, here's a five-ply braid. It's really tight and tough. But we just really take for granted today in our world uh, the usage of fasteners and rope, cordage, uh, thread, fabric, made some word that we we don't even know about. Just, and in, in the ancient world, it wasn't that way. And for most of human history, it wasn't that way. For most of human history, people had to go out and come up with stuff like this, you know, just to survive day to day, to, to make weapons, uh, to protect ourselves, to make bows, uh, for warfare, for hunting, for for bow drills to make far, I mean, just lashing their shelters together, every application in the world, everything that we use, a rope, a string, a piece of fabric or thread for, that they had to 
they had to manufacture it from their surroundings. So, and that's really why I urge people interested in bushcraft and stuff like that and survival skills to sit down and 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 give a go with this. This is really really a sharp skill to have. If you could be out in the natural world and just take a plant in its rawest form and turn it to a fishing line, a bow string, a bow drill string for far, just just something that's gonna give you an edge out in nature, man, they're just, that's, that's, that's really an important skill to have, I feel like. And I wish I wouldn't waited so long to learn it. I wish I learned this when I was young. So if there's any younger folk out there, well, any kids, y'all get into this when you're young, don't wait till you're older like me and try to learn it all. But. Anyways, I hope y'all enjoyed this video. I really enjoyed it. I enjoy doing this stuff. It's kind of meditative for me, but hope y'all learned something. And uh, if you did, like it and subscribe for the next one. We'll see you then.